Ah, there you are. A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, the World Stop Broadcaster and the First Lord of the Internet. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the World's Top Broadcast Platform. Dinky do to every single one of you, I say. And, of course, a very, very happy Easter. Lovely to have you with us. Lots to talk about tonight, so I hope you'll come on as quickly as possible. Join me, Scotty McClue. The world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet. This is the big one. This is the one everyone's talking about. This is the one everyone is watching. Welcome, 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 I say. Now, your job is to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10 about Scotty McClure live on the big one on Facebook Live. Sunday nights, nothing gets past me, of course, and it's nine o'clock. Welcome, 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 I say. Hello, my friends, there's Joseph Gibbons. Hello, Joseph. Lovely to have you with us. Start sharing, guys, so that everybody has uh, got a chance to see this wonderful program. Uh, good evening, Scotty, this is Jim McGeary. Good evening to you, Jim. Lovely to have you with us. Happy Easter to all of you. The telly is not for the faint-hearted these days, I tell you. So there you are. Good evening, good evening, and excellent to have you all with us. Come and join me for an hour, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for the nation, but not just for one nation, for every nation throughout the globe. Fantastic stuff. Lovely to have you with us. Happy Easter, Scotty Live. Uh, Geese Peas says uh, Steph McElhaney, obviously, is keen on his mushy peas. Mushy peas to you, Steph. Excellent stuff. And, of course, peas at Easter. Peace to the world, I say. Good evening. You're looking very la -de da tonight, says Stephen. Say, well, Stephen, I divested myself thus of my tie, and I've popped on my cravat to go with my jacket, you see. So there we are. Never a dull moment. Uh, Gerald Mackay, Mackay, lovely to have you with us. Hello, Scotty, says Anne-Marie Crohn. Hello, Anne-Marie Crohn. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky-doo, of course. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClue is live globally, worldwide, on Facebook Live. Hope you had a good weekend, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton. I did, Thomas, and I hope you had a good one as well. It's been a marvellous, marvellous weekend. A little bit cold still. Joseph Gibbons are in Manchester tomorrow evening to watch Toto in concert. And then I'm off to see them in Glasgow next Sunday. Enjoy, Joseph. You will have a fabulous experience. You look like a Rover 75 driver. Ah, now, those two Rover 75s, there might even have been three, right? We need to get that checked out. If you're talking about the most recent one with the chrome door handles and all that sort of stuff, I think we're talking about the 75, late 50s. Marvellous stuff. Scotty, can you give a good luck message to my niece, Courtney Drysdale, to have a great time in Magaluf, where she's working for the next six months. Love from Uncle Gordon and Auntie Yvonne. I can indeed. I can always give a message out. Not a problem. Scotty, do you like Glasgow Angus? Yes, I went to Glasgow Angus University. So there you are. Hoots one, Scotty, says Chris Kelly. Hoots one to you, Chris. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten, folks. Scotty McClure is live. Do not waste a second. You waste a second of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life. Uh, wish you were back in the radio, Scotty. Your phone ins are legendary, says John Finley. Could be happening, John. Lots of uh, high profile meetings going on because now it's kicking in and the radio bosses are getting a bit anxious that they might have gone too far the other way with their uh, presenterless jukebox type radio. People are getting a wee bit fed up. I knew it was a powder keg they were storing this up. So they are going to need live programs. You're a legend, says William Sanderlands. So are you, William. Lovely to have you with us, I see. And dinky do. A leg end, says Stephen Say. I am a leg end in my own lunchtime. Of course I am. Used to love you on the radio, says Debbie Trainer Monroe. Debbie Trainer Monroe. I love doing the radio. But I've been watching a bit of Easter television and. Ooh, ooh, oh, there you go. I think Scotty McClure would do well on television for half an hour on a Friday night, say about 11 till 11.30, with the phone in. Uh, Glasgow Ennis is the band, Yamagi. No, Yamagi, Steph McElhenney. Glasgow Ennis is Latin for Glasgow, as in Glasgow University, Yamagi. 
Uh, happy Easter, my old mucker. Maybe the band as well, of course. Not at all. I'm not doubting that for a second. Happy Easter, my old mucker. Hope all's well, sir, says Carol Morris. And to you, Carol. Lovely to hear from you. Stephen say, you have a face for radio, Scotty. Yes, a nice face. Radio's a nice thing. And I think you've got to look your best on radio at all times. Scotty, why does chocolate Easter taste better than any other time of the year, says Alan Cadden. Yes, but be very, very careful. Never feed Easter eggs to dogs or chocolate to dogs. Not good for them and can actually kill them. So there we are. Uh, Robert Devlin, top man. Lovely to hear from you. And dinky do. Um, dinky do, Lord, says Robert Devlin. Now, I haven't got my messenger downloaded on my device here because it interrupts the program, believe it or not. So there you are. Scotty, I was up in Durer at James of the Glen's birthplace. There's a cracking wee bothy there. Have you been? Me being a Campbell, staying in there for the night. A bit scary. A bit scary for any Campbell up there. I can tell you that in Glencoe. But of course, I know Durer very, very well indeed. My great-grandparents were uh, married, married in Glencoe Village Hall. So there you are. And Balakahoolish, of course. Scott, is it bad to eat rabbit at Easter to celebrate this Gavin McLeod? Well, if you're a rabbit eater, it's not so popular nowadays. We used to get rabbits from the butchers, and you could have rabbit pie. So there you are. Pinch punch, all that stuff. White rabbits. Happy Easter, Scott, is it Ronnie Stevenson? Happy Easter to you, Ronnie, my dear fellow. You are a top man. If anyone else tells you otherwise... You refer them to Scotty McClure, Scotia himself. I will speak to them. Hello, Scotty. Happy Easter to you and all the followers, says Brian Kissick. Happy Easter to every single one of you guys. Lovely, lovely, lovely. An absolute privilege to be with you on a Sunday night for show number 81. So there you are, 81st show. Good evening, Mr. McClure, says Douglas McPherson. The Scotsman and his wife walked past a swanky restaurant. Did you smell that food, she asked. It smells absolutely incredible. Being a kind-hearted Scotsman, he thought, what? Oh, I can't see more. It says see more. If I click see more, it's so sensitive, I can lose the broadcast. So there you are. It goes. It will include, uh, conclude the broadcast. Happy Easter, Scotty, from Jim and Lindsay in East Kilbride. James Barrow there up at the East Kilbride Taxi Owners Association. Dinky do to you, James. And always lovely to have your company throughout the year. Show number 81. All we did was press the button to say hi. So there we are. 81 years later. Scotty, you're a wee sex bomb. I hope you're well, says Rab Hill. Thanks very much, Rab. Very kind of you. Uh, Ian Walker people still coming to the pubs in Kirkcaldy selling rabbits. Of course they do. I mean, in Kirkcaldy, nobody's told them the war's over. So there you are. So they'll be uh, growing for food. Walls have ears, all that stuff. There we are. Hi, Scotty. Sean and Steph, watching as usual. You're looking sweet, mate. Uh, so, swav, swav, says Sean McCormick. Thanks very much, Sean. I haven't got my glasses on because they're no good. They're the wrong distance now. I have to take them off to read. Uh, I'm not religious, but any holidays all right with me, says Ian Walker. Um, are you an atheist or an agnostic, or are you just not sure, Ian? So there we are. Uh, Douglas McPherson, Dinky Doo, says Gordon Drysdale. And uh, Dinky Doo to you, Gordon Drysdale. Lovely to have us all together. Eat a rabbit and you'll run all day, says Michael McGuigan. I wouldn't be surprised, Michael. So there you go. Absolutely marvellous stuff. Uh, Hedley McArthur's watching. Hedley McCarthy, Dinky Doo to you, lovely. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live. The one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. If you see the state of our television programs, you will know why everyone's turning to Scotty McClure, the new television, to say dinky do. So there we are. Hi, Scotty. I read in Wikipedia that you're from Greenock. Is that right? It's just scary. Yes, but uh, everybody knows that. So I don't want Greenock getting mobbed, people looking for Scotty McClue, because it's a fine wee tune. So there you are. And uh, we need to get Thatcher stole all the money from places like Greenock, took it to London. She asset stripped Scotland. So we need that money back. Greenock needs some serious, serious financial investment from the government. And it would be nice because it was a Tory Thatcher that stole it. If the Tories gave it back, that would be a nice touch. So there you are. Uh, I'm a creationist, Scotty, 
the true past and the future, says Ian Walker. There we are. Well, I'm everything, Ian. I'm a universalist and a believer in all sorts. <coughs> now, the dinky-doo, says Headley. Dinky-doo, Headley. Happy Easter, McClure, says Gordon Sterling. Can I suggest a solution to Glasgow's pollution problem? Let's introduce driverless taxis. <laughs> Oh, for goodness sake, it'd be wilder than it is already. Uh, Scotty Reentown are at Oran Moor on Saturday 28th of April. If anyone likes American Americana country, get a ticket tonight through the usual agencies. So Reentown, Oran Moor, 28th of April, guys, if you want to get a ticket through the usual agencies, I see. Phone in back on, two hours will brighten the place up, says Rab Hill. Absolutely, Rab, we'll maybe hear from you tonight. Should there be a statue of you in the well park, says Chris Kelly. I think so. One of Greenock and Glasgow's finest sons. I always said I should be in George Square as well. But uh, apparently you have to be did. So we're not wanting that right now. And uh, the other thing, of course, is, but you see, look at this country. You've got to be all misted before you get recognised. Do you know what I mean? Incredible. Uh, Theresa May is getting as bad as Thatcher, says Gordon Drysdale. Scotty, uh, here the Pope came out and said there is no hell you cannot make it up so there you are oh i think there's uh, i think there's definitely a hell uh, robert devlin alberta's tuesday and wednesday if you're out and about for a video signing a donation will be given lord well that's optional rob that's not a problem at all i'm quite happy to sign your video we sold thousands and thousands and thousands of them in 1996 absolutely tremendous uh, how is George Square, says Rab Hill? It's still square, still square, Rab. Yes, they haven't changed that to George Round. So there you are. Even though there's a few round people sitting in it, I can tell you that for nothing. A very fine square, George Square. <coughs> I do love it. There we are, just having a touch of the Adam's Hill. Mm. Oh, that's bliss. That's absolutely lush. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Right, folks, if you've just joined us, you wonder what on earth you're watching here on Facebook Live. You're watching Scotty McClue, capital S, small c, o, double t, i, e. That's the Scotty. The McClue, capital M, small c, capital C, l, u, e. I am the one stop broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. And um, we're at the uh, mercy of the algorithm. How many people actually get to see it? So spread the word as much as you possibly can. Spread and spread and spread. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live, just for you. Saying, dinky-doo. Right. Uh, fish supper on me, Lord, says Robert. Thank you, Robert. Very, very good for me, a fish supper. But uh, very kind of you. But we shall see. Never, ever, ever feel obliged to Scotty McClue. I accept applause or derision on my merits can i have some more hearts please and thumbs up guys come on tap 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 de tap tap de tap de tap kevin barry doherty scotty how's it going it's going beautiful kevin barry doherty and i think we should tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. can we have a share right now please everybody watching just share say i'm watching scotty mcclue Scotty, can I get a signed bonnet, says Gordon Drysdale. <laughs> the Driverless Taxi Owners Association could perhaps be redeployed on driving Glasgow's new Euro 6 buses uh, that we, Nicola, will buy the, the Euro 6. Wonderful stuff. So they are. I've always wondered, when they're buying all these fighter jets, would they not be cheaper buying some new buses? So there you are. It is a thought. Is a thought. Wonderful to have you there. David Lee Weir, where have you been? Come and join us for goodness sake. Do not hide in the shadows. Shared, says Anne Marie Crohn. Anne Marie Crohn, I thank you very, very much indeed for sharing. Excellent stuff. And Dinky Doo. Jenny McMahon's watching Dinky Doo. Highland Wedding, please, says Douglas Lawrence. Highland Wedding or Highland Cathedral? So there we are. That's what we have to talk about, please. Are you talking on the squeeze box, Douglas? You'll have to give us an idea of how it goes. So there we are. Dum da dee, da dum da he. Okay. Is Mary's wedding also Highland wedding, or is Highland wedding totally different? Um, I think you should organise a Highland wedding, Douglas Lawrence, and we'll all come along because I have you down as the finest exponent of the Scottish fiddle in the world. Now then, <coughs> good evening, Scotty. Hootsmon, 
says John Finlay, dinky do. John, lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure, live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. The one everyone's talking about. The one everyone is watching. Can you believe we are all together globally throughout the world? Courtesy of Facebook Live. How fabulous is that? Evening, boss. Happy Easter to you, says Murray Ravage. Evening to you, boss. And a very happy Easter to you. Forgive me for not wearing my tie tonight. But I thought I would have a, a cravat night. So there you are. Shared Scotty. Okay, mate. Excellent. Get sharing and sharing and sharing. Uh, big meetings with top people in radio, by the way. So who knows? Your phone in could be coming back sooner rather than later. Do you think, Scotty, that the Blairites and the Labour Party are afraid of Corbyn becoming PM with all the lies they're telling about him? Yes. I mean, this is all orchestrated. When you see a big campaign like that, Always think the opposite, right? Because the thing about Jeremy Corbyn, and I am not a Labour man, I'm not a political animal at all, as you all well know, and I'm certainly not party political, but I would say that uh, he's a true Labour man, he's a true socialist. And on the 1st of May 1997, when I drove from Sheffield to East Lothian, clambered into my little bed, popped the telly on, and saw it, the Blairites and Tony Blair and all that celebrating that Labour had got into power. I thought to myself, thinking of John Smith's memory, I thought, this is the end. And, of course, it was Labour that uh, got themselves out of the running in Scotland by not backing Scottish independence. A very, very foolish move. And they were consigned to the political wilderness to just wander about for time immemorial. So there you are. That's what you get. Excuse me, Lord. Need to pop out. Back ASAP. No problem, Robert. Take great care of yourself and we'll catch up with you soon. Now then, <clears throat> who have we got here? They are telling a lot of whoppers about uh, poor old Jeremy at the moment. Uh, Scotty, I read that you're going to do a show called Sorry, I Haven't a McClue. Is this right? Ha, ha, ha. Chris, I've never, ever heard that before. Scotty, not a clue. Oh, what a clever play on words. What a clever man you are for a wee play on words. Excuse me a second, every day. Oh, the heat in here. And yet, it hasn't necessarily heated up <coughs> to any great extent since the, um, the winter kicked in about three years ago. Uh, the Brazilian Navy bought an old frigate off the MOD for a million pun. I think that's really cheap. The scrap value would be nearly that. Selling stuff in the cheap, no wonder the MOD don't have. And uh, for reasons of space, Ian Walker, we can't actually continue with that. There's no room. So there you are. Tell 10 to tell 10, folks. Keep sharing. Uh, Chris Kelly, lol. My uncle's uh, destroyer, the HMS Harvester, that went down on the 11th of March, 1943. She was actually built um, uh, for the Brazilian Navy. I think she was built in Scotland, actually. I need to check that for the Brazilian Navy. Uh, and then uh, she was requisitioned by the, by the Royal Navy. Scotland is a historic week for the Gaelic language, says Alan Cadden. The people object to it being used more. There's been objections to Gaelic. Uh, so there should never be an objection to Gaelic. It is a minority language per se. But um, you, if you look at the BBC in Scotland, it's always been headed up. Um, or you know, it, it was early days. It was headed up, and on a number of occasions, it's been headed up by somebody from the Geltach. So there you go. Very, very interesting. Take your hat off, says Anne Marie Crone. No, Anne Marie, I haven't brushed my hair. <coughs> my thick shock of black hair. Good evening, Scotty. How about a Scott McClure tour of Scotland? You will be popular. Ivan, I think it's something we could do. Have a wee night, wee stage night, and nip round the village halls, what have you. Need to get the transit van. What about Trump? Um, he's running the USA, says Rab Hill. Very interesting. <coughs> Pardon me tonight, folks. We we touch of the uh, uh, a frog in the throat. Uh, Hiya, Scotty. Happy Easter, says Tony. Here. You need to get a bigger hoose, Scotty. If there's no room there, says Ian Walker. Well, yes, we're a bit tight, so there you are. The old, the old one bed. You don't want to be paying the bedroom tax, you know. Ooh. So, you're better with the one bed. That's the stuff. <laughs> you can let that out and get in the couch downstairs. Right, so there we go. Now, um, if you want we shout out, do feel free, not a problem. 
Uh, Stuart Main, thank you do. On you come, and let's hear your chit chat. If you've just joined us, folks, can I say a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. This is Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, live with you on Easter Sunday, program 81, our 81st program. There are millions and millions of you have now seen Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. How incredible is that? <clears throat> upwards of 2 million, but I would like the audience to be upwards of 2 billion. So there we are, that's what we should have. Uh, that hovercraft again, says Douglas McPherson. Uh, the hovercraft, yes. Kamrahau hakama. So there we are, excellent stuff. Ikiva, I say. Falchi, falchi, ki damili falchi, don skotiach makluach on. Facebook, Facebook. Yes, absolutely. The old single end in Mulgai, says Ian Walker. <coughs> a single end, I don't think there's many single ends in Mulgai, Ian Walker. I have to tell you that. You're a top man, Scott, this is Thomas Hamilton. You too, Thomas. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do, I say, spread the word, folks. Share and share and share as you possibly can. Easter Sunday, nothing gets past me. Tell me about your Easter day. Tell me about your wishes for the future. Feel free to go tap, 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 to tap on your typewriter or your uh, your typewriter. Did you like that one? <laughs> Aye, your typewriter. Very good, Scotty. Uh, so there we are. Come on and uh, give us your chit chat. Graham Loudon's there. Thank you, do. Uh, it's, a, it's a very rainy Easter Sunday in Derby, says Tony here. Tony's watching down in Derby. Excellent stuff. The home of Rolls Royce. And uh, lovely to know that you're there, Tony. A fine part of the world, Derby. And of course, Derbyshire, McClue adores. I remember spending a lovely Sunday going round the great Chatsworth house. Marvellous house. So there you are. Dinky do, says Graham Loud. Dinky do to you. And of course, you're down in McClue country. I'm very, very big in the Peak District and very big in Sheffield. Yes, marvellous stuff. Enjoyed it down there. And notting up. All right, wee man, says Joseph. Dinky do, Joseph Clanagan. All right to you. And uh, marvellous stuff. Norma Akert's watching. Dinky do, Norma. Come and join us. You're watching Scotty McClue. We're live on Facebook Live. This is the big one. The one everyone's watching. The one everyone's talking about. If you see the state of television today, you'll know why you're watching Scotty McClue. Live. Just for you. Son of late, Scotty. I'm just back from Dundee. Another draw for the Jambos. So Sandy Howden Morris, did you put your hand into the hat and do the draw yourself, Sandy? Very, very good. What numbers did you come up with? What's your thoughts on independent Scottish is John Finlay? I'm going to give you a word, John, and I want you to make a note of it, right? There we are. Now, I'm going to give you a word. And remember, you got it from Scotty McClure, right? Independence. Are you ready to write this down? Independence for Scotland is axiomatic. A-X-I-O-M-A-T-I-C. So write it down first, and if you don't know the meaning of it, you can check it out, okay? But independence for Scotland is axiomatic. That is not a political comment. That is a practical, sensible, economic, common sense comment. Independence for Scotland is axiomatic, simply because the chances of a Westminster Parliament, regardless of the colour of party, um, understanding the Scots psyche, understanding Scottish economics, understanding Scotland is very, very, very slim indeed. We've got a lot of very clever people in Scotland and therefore Scottish independence is axiomatic. Take the politics out of it. Everybody back it. Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> If it doesn't work out, we can come back. Uh, so there we are. Scotty. Um, oh, there he talks about another broadcaster. No, no, no. I'm not, Chris. I'm not going to get into all that arty bargy about another broadcaster. But um, I, I know that broadcaster. So there you are. Uh, can't wait to get you back on the radio, Scotty. Uh, after a fantastic 20 pass goal, hearts were shocking. McClure would sort these underachievers out. No further comment. As I may use bad language now, Alan Cadden, I'm quite sure you would not use bad language. But bad language, right? The sweary words are the one thing that puts me off on Facebook. Now, I'm no prude. 
right? I'm not saying I don't understand these words. I'm just saying that they devalue Facebook posts. So if somebody's putting a sweary word in, it devalues it, you know? So what they'll say, they'll say something very sensible, politically or idealistically, and then they'll finish up with, you know, something to the lot of them. And I think, no, you've devalued the lot. So there you are. Uh, every single result in any election shows SNP at mid 30% every time. Sandy, <laughs> I do love you. You should be a politician yourself. Uh, twisting all that stuff around. I think we're probably looking at between 60 and 72% of Scots would like Scotland to be independent. And that will probably have gone up a lot. We might be talking 70, 80%, that kind of thing, because, you know, the lie, the vow, all that nonsense. And Sandy, you're an intelligent man. I'm surprised at you shooting yourself in the foot. So there we are, very strange. Uh, you know, I mean that, uh, obviously, in, in uh, you know, as, as a saying. The French canny count, you ask for two trois rolls, they give you three. Ian Walker, I have to say, one night in Paris, it was Le 14 Juillet, the 14th of July, Bastille Day, and McClure happened to be in Paris at the time, and I decided I was outside the, is it the Gare du Nord or the Gare du Lest? What's the one that's a very picturesque one with the cobblestones and you can sit outside at the wee cafe? And um, the uh, the waiter came over, the garçon, and he said to me, Qu'est-ce que vous désirez, monsieur? And I said, Ah, sandwich, jambon. And he went, Oui, combien? And I said, Deux, deux. I thought I'll have two ham sandwiches because I thought it'd be like, you know, a wee square of bread cut across. Anyway, back he came with two baguettes stuffed with ham. And uh, I thought, I'll just eat them slowly, you know, I was getting the right couchette to, to uh, Salzburg, and I thought, I'll just, I'll eat them slowly. So there we are, massive, so I sat outside in Le Catergie, in a beautiful summer's evening in Paris, outside the station. It's the Garde de l'Est, isn't it? And uh, there, was it the Garde de Nord? Can't remember now. And uh, there I was, munching on the baguettes au jambon. <laughs> Deux, monsieur? Oui. <laughs> So there we are. Uh, away you go, Sandy, says Ian Johnson. Uh, oh, Sandy, don't be hard on Sandy, because he loves talking nonsense. How are you, Scotty? Says Alistair King. Lovely to have you with us, Alistair. And Dinky Doo from me, Scotty McClue. A very warm welcome to every single one of you. If you've just joined us, you're watching the World's Top Broadcaster and First Lord of the Internet, Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook Live, just for you, Dinky Doo. There we are. Can we have a share, please? We're just coming up to half past nine. And we need to get sharing. Now, does the time suit you? <clears throat> Scotty, Indy was fixed, my man, says Paul Lee. Well, I don't think we can make that accusation unless we have serious, serious proof. But having said that, there was certainly a massive, massive battle against independence because Westminster is scared stiff of losing Scotland. The trick would be, and I know it's not popular with you guys, but the trick would be to make sure you embrace Her Majesty the Queen. I look at the states of uh, some of the world leaders these days and I thank God for the Queen. I think how marvellous is that? And that again is not a political statement, that's just practical, good common sense. Take the royal family with us in an independent Scotland, right? Our argument is the union of the parliaments, not the union of the crowns of 1603. So there we go. Happy Easter to you, by the way, says Ian Johnson. Lol, says Ian Walker. Of course, lol to you, Ian Walker. Happy Easter, Scotty. I hope you're well, says Paul Kyra. Dink you do very well indeed, Paul. Marvellous to have you with us, I see. Scotty, my pal started calling me the exorcist because when I'm up in this house, all the spirits disappear. <laughs> I'll bet. So there you are. I've been there myself in my day. Uh, five minutes. I'm phoning for a wee laugh, says Rap Hill. Right, we'll see if you're coming on, Rap. That would be marvellous. I'll just check that all is well here. There we go. I've just got to make sure that you're, you're plugged in, Rap. So there we are. We don't want you uh, coming on and not getting heard. So there we are. That's Rap. Rab phones, the only thing is he doesn't always hang on, and we usually lose him. So there we go, but he's coming on in Messenger. Um, this should be two hours. This hour's not long enough, says David Rendell. David Rendell, I thank you 
I love being with the nation and being with all nations. We are global. If you're watching in Australia or America, or Canada, Russia, China, Japan, do give us a shout. Say dinky do to Scotty McClue. We have no borders on here. We are global. There's only one race, the human race, and that plus all our animals. Fantastic. Scotty, do you think you'll be in the New Year's honours list, says Chris Kelly? I haven't been so far. I wanted to be knighted at 37 like Lord Wreath, but I don't need it. The older and wiser I become, there's absolutely no rush. The only thing I see that a lot of top people don't get knighted until much, much later in life. I think, look at the wonderful people. Kenneth Dodd, Sir Ken Dodd, Kenneth Arthur Dodd, Sir Bruce Forsyth. Both of them have now passed on to the next step. So there you are. But they were uh, a fair old age when they got dubbed on the shoulder. The one I would like, actually, because I'm not too bothered about MBEs or OBEs or anything like that. But the one I would quite like is either a KCVO or a GCVO. So there you are. Either a knight, a companion of the Royal Victorian Order, or um, a Knight Grand Cross. So they are GCVO. There we are, my old, uh, my old mentor, Lord Wreath. He, uh, he was a GCVO. Uh, no, the monarchy, it's 2018, no, 1718. 30 million for the wedding, it's outrageous. Uh, Ian Walker, would you ever give up? Your ignorance astounds me. The monarchy costs us between 50 and 60 pence a year, probably about 52 pence a year, right? Absolute bargain and as for making them a target of your bile take the politics out of it they are a political right and if there's 30 million on the wedding or not it's all going back into the coffers it goes gets spent so there you are it goes round and um, david rendell has no sense of timing one hour is more than enough says gordon sterling it's more than enough of you my dear friend i could tell no in fact let me just be much bigger. Let me show some largesse, Scott and Sterling. An hour of you could never be enough. A lifetime of you could never be enough. Because you're a very interesting man. And you could talk diesel engines with McClue. Remember, L. Gardner, machinist. That was the brass plate outside Lawrence Gardner's workshop in Manchester. L. Gardner, machinist the father of the gardener engine not a diesel a heavy oil engine because his machining was so good sandy howden is one of the most intelligent callers you'll have keep the red flag flying here says after james wright so there you are well what you'll find is your red flag man founded the snp they are the chairman of labor went on to found the snp so the snp is labor's child so they are, and at one point, you couldn't get a fag packet between them. But what Labour need to do, and what Sandy should be thinking about, they need to back independence for Scotland. All right? If they get on and do that, and again, not a political statement, not a political comment, pure, utter common sense. If Sandy's as intelligent as you say he is, Alfred James Wright, and I have absolutely no reason to doubt you, surely he must see that. Remember, McClue is not blinkered or clouded by politics. McClue gives you the facts. He tells the truth. All right. They are, all right. Will you plug in for me, says Rab Hill. I think we're plugged in, Rab. You should be able to get on now. So there you are. Scotty, who was your most memorable caller when you did the phone in? Says Alan Cadden. I had so many memorable colors try and put into youtube the scotty mcclue youtube channel and if you put in a, an interview with two t double o grumpy critics right and it's meant to be two all right two grumpy critics so they are my most memorable color i think it was the lady the day of the Twin Towers, right, here's the deal, guys, here's what happened. The day of the Twin Towers in America, 9-11, right, uh, when the Twin Towers came down, almost every radio boss panicked and said, pull the phone in, 
pull the phone in on a night like this. And I said to my boss, keep the phone in. He went, I'll go with your judgment, Scotty. You're a man of wisdom. And we had we put on the phone in. And we ended up playing the British and the American national anthems. And it was one of the most memorable programs. I don't know if you heard it. One of the most memorable programs I think I've ever done. And uh, one of the callers was a lady to say her son had a meeting at the World Trade Center at nine o'clock. And um, she saw the whole thing on the telly and um, he couldn't get a signal to phone her or anything like that. He was trapped on an underground train in the metro. So there you are. So I think probably that's got to be one of the most memorable calls. There were so, so many calls to that program that were memorable. So there you are. A lot of them are on Scotty McClue's YouTube channel, on YouTube, obviously, on YouTube. Did you like that? Too much information, McClue. They are gone to YouTube and put in Scotty McClue YouTube channel, and you'll get some of the most memorable calls. Scotty, every time you promote independence, I drink a half. I seldom make it to the end of the show. <laughs> Charles McLaughlin, how wonderful. I take it you agree with me, Charles. Marvel stuff. Scotty, don't play the squeeze box the night. Play the claw hammer. Very funny. Lol says Ian. Ian has got a very strange sense of humour, hasn't he? He laughs at all this stuff, you know. It's stuff I've never seen. He should be writing it as alternative or an alternative to comedy. There you are. Folks, if you've just joined us, can we share, please? Share, 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 share. And when we finish the programme, a lot of you have twigged that it stays up on Facebook so you don't watch me live, right? A lot of you have twigged that it gets uploaded to YouTube so you don't necessarily watch me live. Not good enough. You need to be here for the moment. You need to see it hot off the press, I say. So there we are. Um, who have we got here? Scotty Tower 3 was a controlled explosion. No plane hit it and it went down. The same as the towers. Here's Rab. Let's take his call and see what he's saying to us. Right? I'll just answer. Okay. Right, Rab, come with us. That's you getting uh, answered now. Hello, Rab. Can you hear me? Right? We've got the old mic. Are you there, Rab? Hello, Rab. What's happening, my man? Can you hear? Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to you, Rab. Lovely to hear from you. Can you hear me? Aye, yes, sir. Um, that's why I'm answering you. That's excellent, because there you are. There's the nation <laughs> watching me taking a call live on Facebook Live. Well, that was good. How good's that? Thank you. It's fabulous. What's happening, big man? Back, you want to get back in this phone and thing? Back in the phone and thing on the radio thing. Ah, you can't, can't get a buzz, make, make the place more, more happier. Are you fed up taking a swatch at my pus? <laughs> I can watch your pus all night. <laughs> I thought you'd had enough of McClure's pus. You thought, no, no, no. Get him not, off not there. A chance, not a chance of that. <laughs> Fantastic. Have you checked? You, you, go on, Rab, go on. You might have tell people the truth here, see, see what's happening. See, was like, well, I always tell people the truth. Oh, well, you're not telling everybody what was going on with the radio carry on. Oh, the ra oh no, I can't at the moment because these meetings are confidential. Right. They're with very, very right. senior people. But as soon as I can, I will. Well, thank you very much for, for that. See, see, people, well, Rab, Rab, when people say to me, I'm going to tell you something, can you keep it to yourself? I say, look, I am one of the most discreet people in the world. Right? Yes, and, if, and, and that's why we all love you. If you want to tell me something and you never want to hear it back via me, then you can do so. You never ever sure. will. However, if you want something put round the world, I'll have it round by lunchtime. Don't <laughs> you put it in the paper or something? Put, yes, it, in the paper, put it in the news. All that stuff. Phone up my buddies and tell them what's what. So are you going to get back on, on the radio or what? Well, I'm hopefully. A, it's a, a simple question. Rab, Rab, it's me. not up to me. People don't understand that. It's not my choice. Well, you tease the number and I'll phone them. Phone them up, phone up, phone up, phone round the radio station. <laughs> so can we not get Scotty McClure on? Aye, I'll call the riot. 
I remember phoning a serious, serious broadcast place one day. So I wanted to speak to a friend. <coughs> and the receptionist was very formal. She said, good afternoon, can I help you? I said, I I said, no, I'm not saying who it was. I says, Scotty oh, McClure here. She says, oh, I used to listen to you in the radio. Can that no come back? And this was wonderful. She just kind of forgot, you know. <laughs> she forgot. I, wo I, I watched you, uh, oh, well, I was at your, your show in Cumbernauld. Get away. Many, many, many years ago. So you were. Uh, yes, yes. It rings a bell. You gloves and, and all that, and that yes. other, uh, what do you call her? Fantastic. Barbara. Yes, fantastic. That was the and, show. And you, that was the big show. Oh, no, that was the one on, on the BBC with Barbara Dixon yes. and Daniel O'Donnell. Barbara Dixon, aye. Fantastic. The guy that was in every news. Daniel O'Donnell. It wasn't he Daniel O'Donnell. Oh, the one with the show we did with Nicky Campbell. Nicky Campbell, why? That's, that's it, it, that's it, that's it. Campbell Mold. <laughs> Do you know what Ian Walker says here? He goes, Rab, you're not allowed mobiles and cells. <laughs> He's terrible. I'm, I'm not in my cell. I know that's it. Did you hear about the lonely prisoner? He was in his cell. <laughs> I see. Man. I was. I was. I, I was the guy that you told him. <laughs> Listen, you take great care of yourself. It's lovely to hear you. Same with yourself, darling. And dinky do. <laughs> Hey, cheery <laughs> boy. <laughs> what a fabulous character. Right, there you go. That's Rob, guys. On giving it the full chat. We'll just, uh, there we go. Now, that just demonstrates that you can phone Scotty McClue on Messenger. How good is that? Um, Scotty, I think this should be a longer show. Have you thought about a midweek show also? Says Chris Kelly. Well, the thing is, Chris, we are seriously, I'm not joking when I say we're talking to some very, very big broadcasters at the moment, because I think it's time for McClue to make a television debut. I would also like to talk to senior people at Facebook and say, look, you'll not get a lot of money out of me for advertising because I don't have that. But what we can do is if you open the thing up a wee bit, get the old algorithm performing properly, get the bots doing their stuff and get McClue around the world, it'd be far more valuable for Facebook. So there we go. Um, Scotty, you must be the only pro-indie supporter who wants to keep the Royal Family. I don't know anymore, says Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright, I'm very, very glad you've said that. And I'm very, very glad you've asked me the question, right? Most people, right, are the people who are anti the royal family don't know why they're anti the royal family and have no reason to be anti the royal family, right? Because the royal family are the guardians of the crown, okay? They're the guardians of the crown, the crown jewels of England, and Scotland, right? The honours of Scotland, the crown jewels, right? And the crowns amalgamated in 1603. So the monarchy is also a Scottish institution, right? Very important. We need to look into this. I wish I had time to explain to people all about the law, the legal side of this, the law of secession, the crown, etc. So there's no reason to be anti the royal family at all, apart from politics of envy. And the royal family are above politics. They don't own all that stuff or have all that money or anything like that. That belongs to the state. Now, the royal family are obviously um, want to keep Britain together, but there is no such country as Britain. The only countries are Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales, right? And Northern Ireland is a Johnny-come-lately. It's a, a pretty new thing because there were a lot of disgruntled people around. So they set up the North and the South. It was divided into the six counties. Ulster is nine counties, of which three are in Ireland. There you are, not in Northern Ireland. So there. are. So you've got all that. There's no reason it's a sideshow. It's nothing to do with Scottish independence. 
The union of the crowns was 1603, and the first king was the King of Scotland. James VI of Scotland became James I of England. All right, James I of Great Britain. Okay, so there we are. And he was the son of Mary, Queen of Scots. So you've got all that kind of thing. So it's very much a Scottish link. The monarchy is a Scottish institution. Her Majesty is 50% Scots. She loves Scotland. She's got a hoose up here. Several hooses up here. But they belong to us, right? Because she did a deal, okay, for tax and for money. So there's no reason for anybody to dislike the royal family. No reason at all. And as I believe Scotland would do well economically as an independent country, take the monarchy with us. All right? So there we are. Don't get involved in all that. Because what I would say to the seekers of independence, if you threaten the crown, it's a different ballgame. Right? The crown is very, very closely guarded as are its curators. So there you are. So bring the crown with us. Bring the monarchy with us. All right. And have independence for Scotland with the monarchy. All right. Because the first minister's warrants come from the queen. They have to be signed by the queen. The queen has a representative in the Church of Scotland, the Lord High Commissioner. All right. So there's all that to be looked at. Um, I'm pro-independence and I love the royal family. Go, Scotty, says Gary Cross. And of course, the stacks people out there. Uh, I'm with you on this one, Chris Kelly, Gary Crossan. Uh, Mary Marcus is my favourite broadcaster, Bar McClure. She's so elegant. I listened to her on the wireless this morning. I've forgotten Scottish treasure. And she's still gorgeous, says Gordon Sterling. Mary Marcus, absolutely. She started a bought a television where McClure cut his teeth. So there you are. <clears throat> it's about elitist people who don't work and are kept in luxurious lifestyles. They even own the seabed. Come on, it's all wrong. Right, Ian Walker, let's deal with your myths, right? They're not elitist for a start. Their job is to get out there and meet the people. You say they don't work. Her Majesty the Queen was up five o'clock most mornings going round the country with a heavy round of engagements, right? She's there. She's the mother of the Commonwealth, the mother of the world. Captain Luxurious Lifestyles, I would like you to try and spend a night in Buckingham Palace and just see how luxurious you think it is with all its creaks and groans and plumbing and um, ancient stuff. See how you get on. It was bought for 5,000 quid <coughs> from the Earl of Buckingham. They are owning the seabed. The crown commissioners are not the royal family. They are representatives of the state. Okay, so they are. So we've just debunked you there. Um, Rebus Scotty, John Hanna, or Ken Stott are very difficult. I love both these actors. They're fantastic actors. I've interviewed John Hanna on BBC Radio. You're some man, Mr. McLean, says Rab. So are you, Rab. We loved your call. Ken Stott, says Gordon Drysdale. Well said, Scotty. You're a wise man, says Charles McLaughlin. Professor Walker, that's you tilt, says Chris Kelly. Hey, take the ribbon from your hair as well, says Rab Hill. Absolutely. Take the ribbon from your... Law, you're at it, Scotty, says you. No, Ian, I'm just telling you. I'm educating you, dear boy. And you should just be grateful. All you need to say to Scotty McClue is thank you. There we are. I think everyone should phone the radio. And say we want Scotty back, says Thomas Hamilton. Why not, Thomas? Everybody does want Scotty McClue back. Everybody I meet says we want that back at night. It was wonderful during the day as well. People said, oh, I don't think you should have gone on during the day. But the audience doubled. It's tremendous. And, of course, our competitors. The real reason that I went is the competitors were getting absolutely thrashed. They were getting totally stuffed by Scotty McClue's phone in. Um, so there you are. So you can all do that. You can all phone the radio and we'll get back on now. Lots and lots to do. Will I give you a tune? You haven't had a tune <coughs> for Easter. Let's see if we can get you something on the squeeze box. How about that? That'd be good. <laughs>
There you go, folks. Will you know come back again, I say. Marvellous stuff. Ian Johnson, lol, lol to you, Ian Johnson, dinky do. If you like that wee tune, give us some hearts and some thumbs up. Come on. De tap, 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 de tap, tap, de tap, de tap. Did you like the wee tune on the squeeze box? Should we keep it in as a regular feature? Come on, let's see the thumbs up. Hearts and thumbs up. Tap, 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 de tap. Smileys. No, there's already crying. Oh, no, they're saying no. Oh, they don't want the box. Are the nose going to take over from the eyes, the eyes and the knees? There's lots of these wee red-hooded characters coming up. There's some hearts and some thumbs up. Yes, the hearts and the thumbs up are overtaking the wee nose. There's some smileys, some smiley faces. Tap, 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 everybody. Uh, loved by one and all. Respect you, says Rab Hill. I'm back, Lord, says Robert Devlin. Dinky you do. You're watching Scotty McClue, folks. The first Lord of the Internet. And, um, of course, the world's top broadcaster. He's not allowed back after Brexit. So there you are. Brexit. I do have to say, there's so much obfuscation going on with Brexit. We're 20 months down the line. And there's no a wain washed or a potty emptied. It's incredible. So there we are. There's not a po emptied or a wain washed with regards to Brexit. So there you are. I think it won't happen. All this. We're leaving the EU. We're leaving the EU a year from now. <laughs> I don't think so. So there you are. Molly Scott, it was a nice tune, says Erica Meyer. Dinky do Erica Meyer out in Australia watching Scotty McClure. You've been practising, Scotty, fair dudes. Well, Gordon, I was so humiliated by you telling me that I'd murdered the Dark Island. And I don't think I had. I heard it back again. Every note was in place. Loved it. You're an awesome man. I've just started a show on an internet station with Lee Travis, says Fraser John Edmondson. Good to hear you, Fraser John. There's room for every single one of us. You get out there. A guy said to me one night, he said, you know, action equals reaction, first law of physics, he said. There's so much media out there, Scotty. And I said, this means there's room for us all. So there you are. Accept applause or derision on your merits. Now then, hope you and your family had a good Easter, Scotty, says Erica. Erica, we did, and I hope you and your family had a good Easter. Lots of love to you out in Australia there. Fantastic. You're in Perth, aren't you? You're in Perth, am I right? Or are you... Did you tell me you were in Sydney? No, you're in Perth. Perth. If you're in Perth, tell me, is it the Black River or the Black Swan River you've got there? Or a dish done, says Ian Walker. There's not a dish done. Not a wain washed, a poor emptied, or a dish done. So there we are. Well played, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton. Callum decided... Um, to call his father-in-law the exorcist because every time he came, he made the spirits disappear, says Douglas McPherson. We had that one earlier, Douglas. Lovely to hear it again. Uh, that tune was bra. Love the mucking of George's buyer. That was spot on. The cleansing of George's cow house. Excellent stuff. Oh, Scotty, uh, on that, uh, play the session that of your leather. <laughs> we do not play... Uh, sectarian tunes, I have to say. Uh, Fraser John Edmondson, the show's good, says Neil O'Gonry. Neil's heard Fraser John's show. Fantastic. And there's room for everybody. There's always room for quality broadcasters, guys. Let me tell you this. If you had a wee swatch at Easter television, uh, or have you ever had a wee swatch at New Year television? Tot, 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 McClue says. So there we are. Lots of hearts from Thomas Hamilton. Dinky do the same to you. Right back at you, TH. I say, lol, says Ian Walker. Stevie McKenzie's watching Dinky do. If you've all just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on the big one Facebook Live. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about this fabulous show. Sorry, I'm just looking up here. I'm just going to do a little bit of sharing. I'm going to move you on to the side. My mother liked the road. And the miles to Dundee, called Windows Hurling. I'll see if I can do that one for you. <clears throat> Just a wee bust, uh, for old time's sake. <laughs> Okay, there you go, 
Road of the Miles to Dundee. McClue, we did not see the box tonight. This was pre-recorded last Tuesday. Gordon Sterling, let me show you the box. There we are. What can I do except show you the box? <laughs> Gordon Sterling, you've got a big ready now, haven't you? Oh, great stuff, Scotty, says Chris. I don't own a TV, says Eddie Doby Senior. You're quite right. Yeah, the licensing people don't believe you, do they? It's quite funny. Uh, thank you. We did. I'm in Tasmania, one hour south off Melbourne by plane. The river in Perth is called the Swan River, Erica. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive my ignorance. You're quite right telling me that. It's all coming back to me, of course. And Tasmania, have you ever met a Tasmanian devil? Now let me know. Uh, wonderful stuff. I've still got her, um, says Ian Walker. Mm. Take the money or open the box, says Ian Walker. What do you think, Scotty, of the Pope saying there's no such place as hell? Has he never heard of Easter Road? Arthur James Wright. Wash your mouth out. There's a lot of high bees watch McClure watching this program right now. So there you are. So I say, hail to the high bees. And uh, this is my story. This is my song. Excellent stuff. And uh, come on the Celtic and up the jazz. All that kind of stuff. Uh, you brighten the place up. Play working man I am, says Rab. Excellent. So there you go. An Englishman entered a bar and stood beside a Scotsman. After they'd chatted for a while, the Scot asked, Where are you from? The Englishman replied, I'm from the finest country in the world. And I can't press see more. This is so frustrating because my device is so sensitive. I could lose the whole broadcast. So there you are. Type me the second bit. Alfred James is right, says Ian Walker. It's okay, Scotty. Yes, I have very noisy little devils. So there you are. Are they out there, Erica? Have you actually seen these wee characters? They look otter-like to me. Um, they, they, they seem beaver-like, that sort of thing. Uh, am I right? Scotty, please tell my daughter Olivia it's bedtime. She's wanting to stay up to the end, says Natasha Jane. Natasha Jane, Olivia should be in her bobos. Has she got her gym jams on, ready to run as soon as McClue disappears? So there we are. Come on, Olivia. Bedtime, my dear, for you. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, we're just about to go. So don't worry, Natasha Jane. Olivia can go to bed when McClue disappears, which will be in about a minute's time. Uh, so there we are. And uh, I'm from the finest country in the world, said the Englishman. The Scot looked sceptical and replied, are you? You have a very funny accent for a Scotsman. <laughs> so there we are. There's only one thing better than a Scotsman. Um, two Welshmen. <laughs> there we are. Scotty, have you been to Glasgow Airport? It's too quick to get out if you drop someone off. If you need change, you're stuck. You should try Dice in Aberdeen. You get yourself setting down there at Dice. And good across there. Thanks, Scotty. What a fab show, says Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly, it's an absolute privilege and a pleasure. This is hopefully a wee opener to um, other things that you can catch up with McClue. Your show's spot on, Scotty Lang. May your lum reek. So there we are. And um, so that's the thing. Glasgow Airport. I think Glasgow Airport should be named Scotty McClue International. There we are. Just a thought. All right, that'll get you going. Right, I'm going to have to push off. You're fantastic people. Good night, Scotty, from me and Anne-Marie, says Thomas Hamilton. Good night, Thomas. Brilliant show, Scotty. Night, night, says Dee Gourley. And two lovely wee kisses. Bless you all, I say. McClure is going to do you all a favour and disappear. Hopefully we'll be back at 9 o'clock sharp next Sunday night on Facebook Live, God willing, weather permitting. Have a wonderful rest of Easter Sunday night. Now you can get back to your tellies if you must and um, have a lovely Easter Monday and a great holiday. Take care of your dear selves and we will catch up soon. 
Oh, did I miss you, says Andy Hughes. How do you, says Joe MacDonald. You're a class act, Scotty. Take care. Scotty, your cravat is yawning. It is. It's getting tired. It's going off to its bubbles. Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, Dinky Doo, I'll sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of wheat or zane. Au revoir and a cheery o. Love to the world, I say. Happy Easter and dinky-doo. See you, lads. Scotty McClure has left the building.